welcome to the Rally with Racket podcast. Um, Coles is is not a fighting game controller. So I, I, I actually a person. Um, so yeah, that's that's quite an advanced language. Um, but I so happen to have Coles in the podcast. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> for, uh, hello. Yeah. Hello. Welcome. Um, it was it was quite a random thing to have you here actually, because. I mean, for one, you're you're always like on my stream, so that's that's a good bonus. Um, that's a very good bonus, in fact. Two, you always like smash me in Fighter Z, and it it is like a fighting game that we're both sort of getting into, um, because we both don't really have that like much experience beforehand. So this is um, a simultaneous journey of. Um, of, I don't know. I was I was trying to like do an elaborate intro, but hey, hey, Coles, <laughs> hello, hi. All right. So we got to We're just going at it free. Yeah, yeah. We're, Everything's we're just, open. We're just going at it. Yeah. We can All right. Talk about literally anything you want, Coles. Well, um, and uh, oh, oh, you actually, know, I'll... you know what I've heard, Coles. Hmm? I've heard that you make fantastic brownies. <laughs> Um, yeah, uh, if, if, if you're a Melbourne fighting game player, if you come to CCH, there's a, a one in three chance that I'll bring brownies with me when I turn up, so definitely something to attack me for, um, <laughs> please, not too aggressively, um, but yeah, um, while Fighters is my first fighting game, it's definitely not the first game I've approached with a competitive mindset, I've done it with about four other games. Maybe five, technically. Um, my first major one being Team Fortress 2. I wish TF2's community was more reasonable and might still talk to people from there, but I have almost... Um, I've spent thousands of hours in a few different games um, with a competitive mindset. Smash 4 was one... My lesser one, but if I didn't play that, I would be much worse off for this game. And um, my time in TF2 gave me the uh, the kind of discipline I needed to improve in this game. You watch your replays, all of those things. Yeah. Universal aspects to improve. Um, Hearthstone was another one. Hearthstone was probably more helpful with self-improvement because, uh, like Fighter Z, both of these games have a... You can kind of approach them with a numbers kind of mindset. Um, like, what's most probable... It's a bit faster paced in Fighter Z with that numbers mindset. Just, just, you can't really uh, look at someone's hand in this game and guess what they have. <laughs> but if you've played them at least five times, you can start to make some decent reads, mm -hmm. which is the same. Um, the same kind of approach. So I, when I played Hearthstone, I would actually do spreadsheets and you know tally up my wins with each play style and um, you know start to. You know, you make for Hearthstone, um, you would make the reads on what cards they have present um, based on that deck's average component. While in this game, you will make reads not usually based on the character and what, what they've brought with them, but um, the way that they play each match. So, how likely they are to reversal. Um, so, it, it's. <laughs> It has surprisingly had experience from other games come in handy for a completely different genre. But it's definitely a big change to what I'm used to. Alright, well, that's fair enough. So you've you've already given me a few good ideas to talk about, actually. And um, So for me, one of my like, esports that I personally came from, um, that I like went into for quite a bit, was Overwatch. Um, so oh, yeah. as well, that's a phone call. We won't worry about that. <laughs> um, so as a person who has come from TF2, uh, because I know a lot of, t I know a couple of, well, about four TF2 pros that transitioned into Overwatch, and for the most part, like they all were very successful, um, at least in the Australian scene. 
Yes, so I... Is there I, a particular reason, like, why you didn't make the jump? Because I, I, I do understand... I did, did play oh, did quite you? a bit of Overwatch okay. Okay. Um, when it first came out. I played it longer than I wanted to, because after I was like, okay, I'm done, I kept being brought back by various friends. Um, I don't know. I don't know who's recognisable. Only one person I know is, like, recognisable that I played Overwatch with, and that's only because I played CSGO on a team. <laughs> so that's all I've got. Um... Overwatch was a game, I played it in the beta, and I was like, wow, this game has a lot of potential. But unfortunately, they didn't really add the complexity that I really wanted. The character I was most frustrated with playing that game was Junkrat, because I loved Demo Man. And playing Junkrat in the beta was like, wow, this character could have such a high potential and skill cap as soon as they adjust these uh, physics. But... Still to this day, I believe if you throw a grand, if you throw a land a landmine above your head as Junkrat and detonate it, you'll still go up. <laughs> so much, yeah. the 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 potential for that character is deeply stunted. But he's he's just the best example I can bring up when I talk about Overwatches. I wish I could love that game, but it's some of its characters are a bit. It's a bit painful playing some characters because I see what they could be like. And you feel like they're limited. Yes. Sense. Yeah. Okay, that's fair enough. You can understand that with a background of TF2. Um, yeah. Like, um, I'm sure if you ask anyone that you know who has transitioned from TF2, the, the difference in the pace of combat between Overwatch and TF2 is massive, as well as the level of micro decision um, available. Like, you like actually acting to dodge rockets midair in tf2 is a conscious decision it's not as available for most characters in overwatch air movement isn't quite as free it's for it's, the record it's as well i don't know a tf2 player that actually like prefers overwatch over, over TF2. really yeah at all they, they still they still really do like tf2 but the problem is like you know the the player base obviously isn't the most active. that's surprising i would have i would have expected some players maybe the more hit scan oriented players at least to prefer overwatch but that yeah. makes sense uh yeah, especially as even most like hit scan mains in tf2 you know like sniper and scout mains i, I guess movement is still very important like especially for those two classes yeah every class really appreciates air movement in tf2 so hmm. i guess that is a lot of partly what i found frustrating if you get juggle in overwatch you can't surf away like yeah. you can't punish people for attempting to juggle you well um th that's, is... that's actually quite the interesting thing because especially like if you're looking at high tier players from other regions going into overwatch from like i i think like the two main examples have always been tf2 and quake right um yeah. so yeah a lot of quake players went on the overwatch like hype train and mm. um oh, quake would have been way way so disappointing so yeah. one weapon <laughs> <laughs> so so a lot of the quake players actually weren't very successful when, when, it, when it came to overwatch i think there was only like a couple out of like a whole a whole bunch like uh internationally that it, it's a whole it's a whole it, new it skill set. so yeah it's so incredibly different because yeah um the difference is overwatch is it's not so, a classic shooter. It's, it's not a classic shooter it's, it's very structured and it's um it's obvious what you want to do and what your characters can do and they're limited within like the the refines of of, of the game well quake is is uh, I'm quake not sure. and tf2 are Qu Qu quake heavily and TF2, um they're not they're not raw I, i'm not sure like what what the best they're heavily is. centered around the flaws in the graphics engine and i mean the physics the engine sorry yeah the, yeah the mechanics and the physics engine within the game and and overwatch like is no nowhere near like so yeah if you way. if you played if you played um if you played scout your entire time in tf2 right and then you moved to play sniper even if you couldn't snipe you could still like be useful even like a well i mean in a very high competitive match no you're dead but um <laughs> if if we're talking about like open or iron you could run around with your smg and you would probably kill someone if you were like ridiculously cautious you just have the raw mechanical skills you can pick up with TF2 transfer between all of them. So even when you pick a new class, you're not lost and you're still a very skilled player. Yep. Um, in Overwatch, if you pick a new character, it's, it's hard to explain. It feels... Overwatch, I think I said it one person, feels more like a first-person MOBA. It's more... 
it's more decision making based than individual skill based. So yeah, yeah, when when you decide to invest ultimates and like high cooldown abilities, that's what matters. Your I'm... your strafing and your individual aim usually isn't important. There are character exceptions. Yes. So I'm not sure if you're aware of this cause, but like, have you have you played any MOBAs? Yes, I've played a good bit, bit of Dota. Um, right, so... I have a lot of friends who are very good at League, and I will never be good at that game. You, you will completely understand this analogy, right? So. For example, I mean, one of the less popular MOBAs, and that's like arguably dead now. Battle Rat is, is uh, no, no, not no, not Battle Rat. Damn. But but, but but you know, I actually enjoyed Battle. Rat. I played a lot of Battle Rat. It, I, it was quite that was good. another. I forgot about that game. I, that's yeah, one I of the other games I played competitively. I loved that game. I had a thousand, one thousand five hundred hours. Fantastic. Okay, so half of that is Esmo. So here, <laughs> here is the storm. Um, oh. was was a very controversial um MOBA that got released. And one of the main reasons why I thought that it would never succeed is because of the way the game was built in that you can't carry, basically. Yeah. Or, or, or they, they made it so that it is so ridiculously hard to carry because it's all about teamwork and, like, using abilities together. Now, like, theoretically, that sounds cool, right? It's like, oh, you know, we can be a team together and do, like, cute stuff. But <laughs> when, when you're watching, it, like, a, as an esports or, like, even as an individual player... It doesn't feel rewarding and it's not exciting. Yeah. The, 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 uh, uh, because as, an individual person, player oh, doesn't it's, matter it's, as much. Yeah, it's so important, right? And one of the main reasons why I've sort of left Overwatch in that sense is That's because cause it has the same quality. Yeah, it does have the same quality. TF2 um, has the same thing. Individual players matter so much and can change an entire game. Which is great. But, like, the team still matters more, but there is that potential at all times. Yeah, but there if, is if, if the other team does doesn't stuff. watch what's happening. Hmm. In Overwatch, if someone doesn't watch what ha what's happening for like a full five seconds, they can still recover easy, you know, even a high-level match. In, in TF2, if you do that, you've lost. <laughs> if you don't look at a guy for five seconds, he's killed all of you. Yeah. Because in, in Overwatch, we came off a meta called the GOATS meta, where um, about four out of six heroes like you didn't have to aim in order to like actually like yes that was um so you had uh brigade winston uh no 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 not even winston you had brigade... oh this this is oh yeah, i'm the, i'm so the, out of date yeah the, 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 this is relatively <laughs> modern so brigade for example you probably will know this uh new hero that came out is yep. um sort of like a mini reinhardt with like a flare and a, and a shield um and instead of like having like a huge shield uh, her hammer actually heals, and she's sort of like an off-support type thing, and she's quite tanky. So that's one character that doesn't aim, and is the most brain-dead character in the game, by the way. Um, and the second character is Reinhardt, because obviously you don't have to aim with Reinhardt. The third character uh, is Zarya, which is the most skillful uh, like hero in the comp. I think Zarya is actually a pretty well-designed hero. Yeah. Um, the fourth, on the fourth one, Lucio... Um, Lucio is a very cool hero once again, but in that comp, it's literally just press the speed boost button and that's all you are. <laughs> um, <laughs> the fifth one, uh, so, and, and the other two were supports, whether it would be, um, my god, I was an expert in this game, I should, I should really know this. Uh, Moira, which is another new support where she doesn't require to aim, like, she basically has lock-on beams, and someone else. Um, but yeah, my memory will jog back to me later. So the the whole idea is you used to have like characters like back in season one, McCree used to be very popular, Genji used to be very popular, and um, it was called the dive comp, where you mm. have a lot of like high skill cap. Okay, if you aim, you can you can actually do well, and that, that's why I enjoyed Overwatch. That's where like Widowmakers were were being like scowled at out, and people were saying, "Oh yeah, look, look how cool this is," but now the game is literally turned into a MOBA, which is not a horrible thing but for me it's it's it, it's just not for me I, I enjoy movies don't get me wrong but it's sort of become watered down to a, a sort of more team orientated game where mm -hmm. the players and the teams some of them have differing opinions it's like you have players who are like i want to pop off and the others are like i really like watching it because i like the little intric intricacies um like that are in the game but i personally don't don't like it because if one of the reasons why CSGO is like so successful as an eSport is because you can bring someone like down from across the street, sit them down, watch a CSGO match, and for the most part, they can understand like everything that's happening on screen because everything's like so simple, right? Overwatch is not nearly as accessible as that, right? It's yeah. so ridiculously difficult to understand. 
But uh, yeah, that's that, that's my rant gone. <laughs> so, yeah. Okay. Based on that, I was also gonna say, uh, just just because you've you've brought it, you brought probably I'm I'm probably not the first TF2 player on the screen, but goddamn, how how did TF2 never get to be an esport? Oh yeah. It's so simple to see what's happening, but there's so many intricacies at the same time. Mm. You understand everything. The only thing that you have to explain to someone is Uber when they're watching a game. Yeah. Nothing that, else is. Mysterious. And that's not even that like advanced too. Yeah. It's it, it's very understandable. <sighs> Tragic. Um, Feels bad, man. Yeah. Well, n now that you've brought me up to talk about Fighters, you probably should talk yeah. about that game. Uh, um. So this, I bought this game pretty much when it came out, but unfortunately, at that time, um, honestly, uh, I I, I was a, I was a bit on the inebriated side when I bought this game. Mm -hmm. I just bought it. <laughs> I, I, my 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 mind was just like, wow, Dragon Ball. This will make me happy. Um, because at the time I was working in Queensland. Yeah. So I was on my just my laptop. So I have this game. Um, and pretty much my thoughts were just like, how 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 do I do how do I do a combo? Um, so, you know, I did all the tutorials and then I look up stuff online. And, um, you know, I'm finding various things, and I eventually find my way onto watching NLBC at some point. I think it was Sonic Fox that I first saw playing with, um, his 16 Goku Black hit team, I think it was. Yeah. And I was like, ooh, combos! So, um, I didn't think about it. <laughs> so I, I just found some Kid Buu combos, because opened the game, picked Kid Buu. So then I put in 16, because um, when I first opened the game, I just put on Kid Buu, um, Goku Black, and Beerus. I couldn't do combos for them. So what I ended up playing was Kid Buu, 16, and um, a character that worked, Tien. And I was, this was just like, when I'd finish work while I was in Queensland, I'd come back and I would figure out, how do I do combos with these characters? And then um, eventually I got back here and I got my full PC set up. So I just started playing um, further, um, just online, with this wacky, not wacky team. That was actually, it wasn't that like, it wasn't that wacky or not wacky, but yeah. Around when I got back, I started to watch a lot of streams. A lot of streams. So um, this is a good point to talk about. The game's age rather than how I started playing, but um, the game's had a lot of balance over time. So we've gone from our first meta. Well, first meta is very hard to define because there's the scrambly point where everyone's trying to play whatever. And then we have the first meta, which is like, wow, Goku Black is so good. Uh, let's play Goku Black. And at the edges, at the creeping oh, edges so of good. this, at the creeping edges of this, we had out of Gohan. Uh, and 16's terrifying, uh, hard knockdowns off everything for no level 3. Mm -hmm. Um, so we both, we... It would be awful, and no one would be playing this game anymore. Mm. So we had Goichi playing Gohan, and then everyone else in existence playing 16, pretty much. <laughs> um, there was more than Gohans than that, but that's how it felt watching it. Um, no, I wasn't really playing properly at this point. I was daily going online. Um, and then we came to the Cell Kid Boo Metal. This is where I started to come into the game. Um, of course. I didn't like Cell. I tried to play him, but I was like, damn, how do people like this character? I actually enjoy him now that he's bad, which is not good. It was bad. Um, but... My first proper team when I first started playing this game, the first team I turned up to a local with was Kid Brew Gotenks Tien. Yep. And it was also the first team I learned to touch a death on. Uh, because of double supers being dumb, you do a little Kid Brew, whatever, like, you know, you do like a pretty much like an enhanced Kid Brew BNB into a Tien assist. And then you would um, go level one, Gotenks, Tien level one, Chatsu. <laughs> and that would kill everyone. That was my only cool trick. But yeah. 
Um, that was good. I turned up to my first local with that team. I uh, played a few people. I won a few matches. I then sat down to play with Zed, a very prominent fighter Z and general fighting game player. Um, and then he beat me 60 matches to two. Good time. I'm not sure why I was happy to sit there that long. I don't know how he was happy to sit there that long. He doesn't seem that patient usually. <laughs> but that was a good introduction to the potential um, of this game. Um, you know, like what playing everything efficiently looks like. And that's what really locked in my interest for it. Fair enough. As, uh, it's, it's actually quite a unique one because there there have been quite a, a fair bit of people coming into this game like pretty fresh in terms of fighting game experience like um, as, as I sort of um, alluded to before this is my like first time actually trying to do well at a fighting game like for, for me personally I my story for you uh, with, with you is, is like nearly identical um, when I first got the game I I ended up playing for a little bit like only about a week but i thought like okay I, I suck i'm just gonna go watch people and then you know one day i'll probably come back and try out this game this is also when i was like in in deep with overwatch mind you as well and um i believe it was actually just after the cell kid boom meta or or maybe it was it was like towards the mid mid side of it that that's when i started like playing and um so my first character that I really fell in love with, and well, to be honest, in like 95% of my teams, I have Goku Black in my team, and he's always been like a character that, look, to be honest, people harp on him for being bad, but I, I, I think he's just like, he's fine. He's not awful, but he's not bad. He's, he's, he's not, bad. he's not bad until you get high up. The issue with Goku Black is he has no sucks. unseeable mix. Yeah, it's, it's, it sort of sucks, but like, a lot of, like, even a lot of pros still pick him as a comfort pick because they need a beam on the team, and some people don't like playing Super Saiyan Goku for some reason. So they so they sometimes slot him in. So uh, those players I, I really do like and enjoy, enjoy to watch because he doesn't have the most insane mix, but they always find, like, a way to implement some assess and make him cool. And I don't know. I've always, he was my favorite character in Dragon Ball Super as well, so I, that, that's the reason why I pick him all the time. It's just a... It's a slight fanboy thing, um, and for the for the all of my fighters in life, my two other characters are always so mysterious and they always change. I always have Goku Black on my team, but the other ones I have never sold myself on. Like Yamcha is a character that I've been trying to learn um, recently, and um, I thought like my ground game on him was was okay, like considering how bad I am at the game, for some reason, against, like, even better players, I could get comebacks. But the problem is, I was, like, dropping shit too often, and I needed to extend my combos, and I just... Because he's so different to a lot of the other cast, I just managed to stuff up all the time, and I don't know. So, now I'm in a, I'm in a team crisis once again. And before, like, the huge patch hit, I was, um... I have a friend called Stormclaw, who won tricks Vegeta Blue, and we, we just usually play, like, um custom games together and he had like some really wicked setups on, on vegeta blue and this and uh i ended up picking him up like towards the just, just before the new patch and he changed so much um so i i wanted to play him in the new patch i thought oh yeah he's gonna be so sick now he uh he definitely is like better <laughs> de he definitely is better but he was so different to what how the old vegeta blue was i was like fuck i can't be <laughs> I, I don't want to rework my whole brain around this because <laughs> you know when you have muscle memory down and then yeah. all of a sudden a rework happens you, you don't and, i'm and playing like, kid boo you don't have to tell me <laughs> yeah well you you, you adapted quite well right like you, you're, still, you're still picking kid boo and i i really wanted to play vegeta blue i'm like oh, i can't do it anymore i'm sorry i'm sorry dude I, I'm, I'm just going the easy scrub scrub way and just like have picked up Goku Blue. Hmm. Yeah, it's definitely. Um. I don't think Goku Blue is as good as people have hyped him up to be, but I don't. I do think he's above average as characters go, but unfortunately, as far as the meta is concerned, above average often is uh, a yeah. not enough. As is evident from our first two metas, where there was a big gap between some characters. If we still had initial release Go Tanks or 
or 16 or Bardock. Oh, yikes. <laughs> oh, or Cell. I mean, oh, initial release kit, boo. All these characters that were pretty far above every, everyone else. Yeah, really far. Um, but we're at this point. I think we're almost there. There's a couple of characters who still continually cough, cough, Bardock, cough, cough, Piccolo, who constantly avoid their, um, their deserved nerfs, but that's not really the fault of the nerf and buffers, it's pretty much their initial design that's put them where they are. Yeah. Um, Kid Bruce in the similar boat, where he's just a very, uh, well, his toolkit is very well-rounded. Only recently would I say he's no longer top 5. I, I think he's probably top 10. But he's definitely not top five. Interesting. Um, actually, based on that, the meta is probably something with history. Uh, well, uh, okay. So at the point that I've gotten to this, um, Rambat and played this Cell Kid Brew meta has reached uh, pretty much its its peak. What what time did the balance changes happen? About first Ever Ever was where it happened. Yeah. Uh, was it Ever? No, I think it was. Uh, it was... I think there are two matches that really signify um, what the peak of the Cell kind of Kid Buu age, which was um, Evo Finals. If that, was that still in that age? Yeah, it was. I'm not sure. But, but because... Oh no, that was 16 Bardock. That was Evo, I was think. It? 16 yeah, Bardock cause, was... Because I remember there were like all, all these Twitter uh, um, things spreading of like the crowd screaming to Sonic. Oh, that's right. I'm thinking of two different Evos at the same time. The yeah. first Evo was where Sonic Fox played um, Cell, Kid Buu, Gotenks, I believe. Uh, I, or I, maybe I, I'm thinking I, of a I, different I match. Even, I don't even think Sonic Fox played Cell at any stage. He did. He played Cell, Kid... There's a very, very well, uh, match that stuck in my mind that got a lot of... Oh, there was like oh, okay, a yeah. lot of people watching yeah, it. Yeah, I think I know what you're talking about. Um... And I remember it because Goichi kept getting opened up by the same perfect attack mix-ups and empty lows on Wake Up. Those were the two things that killed him. Right, that match. I like it. Plus, plus uh, Sonic Fox got like a TOD off like twice. So, <laughs> um, which is impressive considering that team synergy is like, if Cell isn't there, the supers were not good. Hmm. Um. But I think that that team that Sonic Fox played was kind of the epitome of that the Cell Kid Boo meta, between like the Cell mix-ups and I mean Kid it was pretty much all Cell that match. I'm gonna be honest. If you go back and watch that match, it feels like none of the other characters did much. <laughs> it was like Cell just rolled Go each year over when he was allowed to live. Yeah. Um. God. But then we had uh eventually when they did get nerfed. Down a, down, down a size, and Cell didn't recover until recently, where it made, made pretty much a false recovery, because he's mid-tier best still. Yeah. Um, but our next our next um, Evo was the epitome of the Cell Bardock medal. I mean, not Cell Bardock. Bardock 16. Slash Gotenks. Yeah. If you're, if you're playing that team during that meta, then you're a criminal. You know it. <laughs> they were they were so much better than every other character during that matter in my opinion that was the biggest power gap um just because all those characters had the most utility by far at that point in the game yeah. they all had good level 3 Oki Bardock's in 16s was ridiculous they all had good assists they all had good neutral um and you didn't have to like sacrifice a slot for like a less efficient character for a neutral assist or like a level three setup because they already had it between them all, yeah. and there were overlaps in that category even. Um, and I believe in that Evo it was Goichi versus Bardock. I honestly don't remember what the cell. Let me let me look this Sonic Fox. I want to find out when he played Gotenks Kid Buu Cell. I feel like that's very important to history. Okay, you can do that. Um, rewind. No? Not not that. What am I looking for? Um, I'm I'm pretty sure at the Evo final, Sonic Fox was running Bardock Point. 
Yeah, uh, in one of his, in one of the Sonic Fox, um, so we had a Sonic Fox, uh, there was Sonic Fox Grand Finals versus Goichi, where Goichi gave him the look that is still used today in, in various images, um, which was, he was playing, um, Bardock Zamasu 16, I think. Yeah, okay, yeah, well, that's what, that's what I remember. Um, but there was one, which I remember, and I would really like to know, uh, it was NL. Is it NLBC? No way. Why would Goichi have been at NLBC? Was that what I watched? Oh no, the first Evo was with um his like the Hit 16 team. That's right. Oh, the right. Hit 16 Goku yeah. Black was the first one. It's like when the game was just out. Yeah. It just popped up. It's so difficult to put all this in a timeline, actually. <laughs> it's so yeah, it's all messed up in my mind. Was it CEO? Or was CEO? It might have been. Yeah, because I thought it wasn't that Evo. Must have been. Huh. No, nope, that that that's a CEO where it was only Japanese players for top eight. <laughs> oh, right. I remember that. What was this? You know, I just if we just search Sonic Fox versus Goichi, I'm sure it'll be one results. Hmm. That was the first one that came out. Final round? Don't know. Well, why do you figure that out, Coles? Yeah. I'm going, I'm going to wag my Patara earrings on the cam. Look at these Patara earrings, how cool they are. <laughs> look at these, look at these. That's, that's fantastic. One, one day I will cosplay. As as Goku Black, <laughs> and that that day would be legendary. That that would mean I'd have to get rid of my facial hair. Okay, so I also don't think that. Okay, I guess I'm pretty sure he played at two Evos. Did he play against someone other than Goichi at the other Evo? Because um the Bardock sixteen match was a final round because it was like at the end of the year. Hmm. Fighting game year, quote unquote. I think like final rounds like at the start of the year or something actually. Okay, I found... Yeah, it's Combo Breaker I was thinking of. This is the match I was thinking oh, of. Breaker, okay. okay. Yeah, I found that match. Yeah. I remember now. Uh, yeah, because there was just so much... There's just so much footage of Goichi down backing his cell against Sonic Fox's cell. <laughs> and then getting mixed up. Oh, that would have hurt. Yeah, I, I remember the match now. Yeah, okay. I know what you're talking about. It's a classic. What were you talking about again? Uh, trying to figure out the meta, and then I got confused about the right. timeline. Of Sonic Fox versus Goichi. Um, so we we're talking about the Bardock 16 meta, and that was epitomized by the Evo finals. Level three meta. Yeah. Level three meta, huh? I don't know. Would I call it that? I mean, no, not not really. But like all those characters really had good level three. Good level threes. I mean, technically, people were like switching out just. To have a level three at the end of a combo, like just as a bar. yeah. Well, it's just like it, yeah. Just the sixteen Bardock shell was the most infamous. Mm -hmm. um, some people just didn't have the the lack of soul to play the full triple triple threat. <laughs> triple threat. <laughs> um, and they all got nerfed. What meta was after that? Was that a bit of a? I'm trying to think. That was the oh that was like the meta that lasted until like the end of the world tour I believe if I'm thinking correctly. And then you had a bunch more Go Tanks, Adult Gohan. No, uh, oh. we had we had well people discovered the um the Bardock Goku shell was yeah. one thing. Yeah, right. Um, there was a lot of team variants during that time. I think there wasn't really. But yeah, that was the Kazunoko team error as well, I guess. Mm, well, Pretty much, well, uh, well, yeah. Well, yeah. I'm sure also was like getting increased play rate. Yeah, he was. He wasn't obnoxious. Like that team synergy, like that team was very good. Mm. Probably maybe the best, but I don't think. You know, it was like toxic and how prevalent it was. Um, but Yamcha still didn't make it onto that many teams. 
And I still think, well, I don't still think. I think back then you could pretty much put him on any team. Now he does, because his solo mix and everything's a little less ridiculous, he's no longer an anchor for every team. Um, you really want to play, like, the aggressive first mixy character. Um, Which is good. With, with that. More choices. Yeah. It's it's pretty much like what... I think Yamcha's in a relatively good spot now. He's annoying, but he's not... He's not a... He's not... Cheap. Hmm. Um... In the end of the day, when you're watching the competitive meta, people are going to go off cheap. What what is cheap in every game? Uh, example of look at the in- pretty much the entire banned list of weapons in TF2. Hey, Vitasol. Uh, yeah. Well, I guess not really that got balanced as well, but probably a better example. Oh no, all, all the cheap, super cheap stuff is banned in TF2. I mean, been balanced in TF2 is competitive now, so. I believe the ban list, last time I looked at it, was pretty good, but, uh, a little, a little, a little late, I guess, yeah. <laughs> unfortunately. Um, all right, Coles. So, all right, let's, 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 let's cut to the chase, Coles, okay? Let's, let's cut to the chase. Do you think, so just judging from what we were talking about then, with, with like a rough timeline, mm-hmm. that... I mean, obviously, the new balance change came in a little bit ago. Do you think we're in the best meta that, or best shape of games it's ever been? Or... I really liked the previous meta. There were some issues with it, but I think there was a lot of team variety. Um, I'm still not certain about this meta, and a lot of people aren't, because it's a big shake-up. So, you know, there's recent tier lists have been very debatable. Which really shows how uncertain everyone is. There, yeah, you know, there's always there's always going to be very different this this tier list. Like there's there's, there's going to be a there's always like every tier list someone's like that's completely wrong. It's just like what what are you what are you talking about? But, but, but even then, like b- yeah, b- before this patch, this, this is this like, is a very hard to judge matter. For for the most part, people would have relatively like similar tier lists, but that have like four characters that like uh, run about four three characters that were like you know debatable one right for this yeah. it's like holy crap like half the roster is being debated here <laughs> it's it's pretty yeah. hilarious i'd say about a third of the characters are big unknowns like um yeah. i honestly don't know where kid boo is at the moment because he might not be top 10 i doubt it but i think he's in top 10 but he's not top five i think he is. that's still not a certain that's still not a certain thing um you know, it's hard. Like people his strengths as a like, character. Top two, it's it's a bit yeah. crazy. Those are the Japanese people. Yeah, yeah. those the, are mainly the, Japanese the, dealers. The Japanese. Most people. most people like um because of how uncertain people are. Usually, when a tier list is made, people are put in. There are no longer like S A B C D E tiers. There is like four tiers and massive like chunks of characters, yeah. and they're all clumped together because they don't know how to separate them, hmm. and. I, I don't know what's going to happen to all of them. Like, a lot of characters' strengths have shifted to different size. Unfortunately, a bunch of them have been somewhat homogenized. Uh, like, Kid Buu is definitely one that's been homogenized quite a bit. Uh, his level 3 is now, like... One of my favorite things about him before was his level 3, the Oki, the hard knockdown, like, timing, was increased the higher they are in the air. Yep. So you could do for, like, a freezer-style knockdown if you did them on the ground. If you did them high in the air, you can do a safe jump. Um, but now it's like, it's always the same time. Though he, ha- he has a much better level 3 Yerky now, but it's not, he's not the same character at all. He's like, 1M, he, he, Kid Brew's staggers and, like, solo pressure are greatly reduced. Um, 2, 3, six, he has no true, like, ball strings anymore. Like, 2, 3, 6 L is a true string, but, uh... Right. That puts you on the ground. <laughs> so yeah. That's not really a ball stagger. It's just like, that's a string. It ends. Um, you're not left in the air. All of his all of his other balls, like, all of his other balls, it's impossible to true string them from any point. So in the previous balance patch, he could just 
barely get a ball string off if he was on if he was above you already and doing an overhead a series of overheads he could go on 236m as a true string and mix from that point and if he guard cancelled against 236m he would catch you for it yeah he cannot use 236m in a true string at all anymore if he 236ms there's also greater recovery while he's in the air so if Kid Draw does a 236M against you without an assist, you can jump up and hit him with light before he can do anything. Hmm. So he has the only solo pressure rock, paper, scissors style thing he has now is 2S. And that is a very flawed uh, solo pressure tool. So his strengths have moved around a lot. His level 3 is much better than before, very different. Um... But I think he's a good example of how stuff has changed. He's pretty... He's been standardized. He's had his... Oh, feels bad. So if, if, if we had the classic, you know, like, five-point power chart that stretches towards power, strength, speed... Um, he's, he's just gone from, like, a weird boomerang thing to a pentagon in the middle of a pentagon. <laughs> <laughs> weird boomerang thing. Okay, okay. Thank you for the visualization. That was, that was actually quite inter- interactive. I, I appreciate that. It's quite yeah. actually easy to imagine that to give him Kid Boo's Kid Boo's play style. Yeah. <laughs> if Kid Boo was a stand, that that's what happened to him. It it is quite interesting as well because, like, I I I guess their goal for this patch was to make sure that a lot of the characters are different but feel similar at the same time if that makes sense like you you mentioned that like they were trying to make kid boo stand standardized and like trying to make him more relative like to the rest of the cast and and that not make him too insane with, with like the weird strings that he had previously um you also have characters uh that for example i think let me just think of some of the characters that i play like, yeah so vegeta blue um from memory, uh, when I was first labbing him at the new patch, all of his damaging combos um, are better, or, or, or they do more damage when you use the, uh, the the grab midair rather than using your smash property, um, un- unless you're going towards a corner. From memory. I'm not 100% sure on that. I'll, I'll have to... I'll his corner that. combos are quite different. Um, as you said, he has the grab ender. But before yeah. using um, using the wreckers to extend your corner combo was usually not that much better than just doing a standard say in B and B. Now the damage difference is quite severe. Like you get six hundred extra damage if you do the correct corner combo. Mm. Um, well, before it's like two hundred extra damage and you get like no good hard knockdown on your own. No sliding knockdown, I should say. Got to be correct. Not everything is a fuzzy. Yeah, awful call. You need to land mate. <laughs> Um, so one, one thing that, that I'd like to ask you as well, because with the, uh, with the fighter Z online things that we're, that we're, that we've been doing lately, um, I, I believe it's going to be called Kami's, Kami House's Fight Club or something like that. The thing that we host every, uh, Thursday on the, on our, on the fighter Z Discord. That I've only turned up to once at most. Oh, no, I turned up twice, but the other time was after the ma- the patch changed. I didn't get to play it all, so well, maybe I'll not have turned up. <laughs> on on the second week, I had my debut calls, actually, on, on stream in the first match. I'm not sure if you watched that. It was it was when I was playing um, Goku Blue for, like, the first time after labbing him for, like, <laughs> 30 minutes. And, and I got smashed by a Brawly player. Um, it, it, it... Limble? Was it Limble? Yeah, it was. Limble, I love Limble. He he goes to our local as well. Um, it was uh, I, I was actually severely surprised, and I was like, Limble oh. has a very strong like, habit of going crap. off, going for cross ups all the time, and I, yes, I know. it's it's so cheap, but it, it's like cheesy. I'm bad, at but I love cross-ups it. Too. No, it was yeah. it was like I was getting better towards the end of the match, but I'm like, my god, I'm gonna develop Parkinson's yeah. by the end of this. He he made me start laughing my like cross ups <laughs> on all my characters because I'm like, wow, that looks fun. Um, and Kid Brew, need, Kid Brew needs to learn that kind of stuff now that he yeah. doesn't have his, uh, his little, little bag of tricks as much anymore. So you do play a lot of locals as well, right? Um, I try to. I've been having a lot of difficulty getting to, to them recently, but yeah. before then I was going to pretty much every available local. I went to the world tour, I got thrashed by a raptor on stream, great. Very good. <laughs> Not good. 
Um, no, not the best debut. Uh, and then I played against a Smash player who pretty, pretty much didn't play the game. And then I played against someone from my locals, uh, main commentator and stream host, Ash, who I usually go pretty 50-50 against. And I think I would have won, but I dropped the killing combo. So, uh, yeah. Not my best first tournament, but at least I didn't go zero. At least I didn't go zero two. I can't say the same for myself. Feels bad now. Um, <laughs> I've actually never played at a local, though, so... Uh, there's um, uh, there's apparently a pretty good one. I think it's called Battle Cat Bunker for Sydney. Yeah, I'm planning on going to that. Yeah, you definitely should. Turning at locals feel a lot more... more a lot more energising than just playing at home on your computer. Plus, offline Fight Z is a much less frustrating game. Oh, yeah. I, I imagine so. I mean, that's always the first thing that's referenced to me when like, oh yeah, you should definitely go to a local. Like, it just feels so much more different. I mean, for the most part, like, the, I mean, I I guess you wouldn't know unless you went to a local. I mean, for my case, I haven't. So, for example, if I go against you, like, our connection um, is usually quite good, right? Like, we... Yeah, considering we, the we, distance. We don't go up against... Yeah, you know, we, we never go up, up above three frames. Um, it's for yeah. the most part like one or two, so it's actually like yeah. around. But for example, there are people that are a little bit consistent, inconsistent. Like I think when I've gone up against Nolby and Aura, like they seem to be like Johnny. Oh, Brown. Nolby's connection is so wacky. Yeah, um, and it, it is really annoying because it always seems to happen at the most unfortunate times. And it's like fuck, I, I could have killed this person. <laughs> it, but yeah, that's 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 the advantage of locals, I suppose. Yeah, um, like, but e even the two and one frame delay, it, the game still feels better with no delay. Yeah, that. of course, yeah. Um, like, yeah. It's like, I, like, some of my fancier combos I will never drop at locals unless I'm, like, super nervous, but... Are you super nervous? Though? I will... S Are I you am, super nervous? I'm usually <laughs> super nervous. Uh. Um, that's, that's a bit of my existence, um... As soon as I can get over that, I'm sure I'll shoot up the ranks a lot more. Probably, maybe. I hope. Hopefully. Um. But that that's that's another skill to learn. So. <laughs> I'm still bad. <laughs> you know, one advice, one word of advice that my my grandfather used to tell me because I I, I used to like despite being called racket, I was I was a sprinter. I, um. But anyway. Uh, I used to get really, really nervous before races, and my grandfather used to tell me, just imagine everyone in the crowd is naked. And I thought to myself, how is that going to That's terrible. <laughs> it makes it even worse. So, so I, 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 like, knowing me as a little kid, and my grandfather just told me that, I had to listen to him. So I'm imagining everyone was naked. And to, to be honest, you know, it pumped some adrenaline into me. I don't know how. Well, I won't discuss that any further. Um, <laughs> I was about to say, be careful. It's <laughs> still being recorded. <laughs> uh, that, that, that's fine, that's fine. Uh, that, that advice never works. Actually, in show business, they, they, they give that advice, and my grandfather did a little bit of that. Um, uh, that never applies to esports or <laughs> sports. I, I don't know why he told me that. Um, <laughs> Imagine all the characters are naked. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> Kid Boo's technically always naked. I mean, he yeah. generates himself with those clothes, so you know, who's to say they're not just part of them? Just imagine Kid Boo naked then, and that's fine. There you go, we've, we've cracked the code. So, you know, as he exists. <laughs> Alright, uh, so, for you, Coles, of course, Spider Z being the fighting game that you've been practicing most recently. Are there any fighting game titles in the future that you would like to pursue to learn? I mean, I know myself, I'm, <laughs> once Mortal Kombat 11 comes out, I'm going to try that. Defying future, because I played Skull Guys a few times and I'm always considering it. <laughs> um, yeah. But aside from that, uh, I've been tempted to play Soul Calibur 6 a lot of the times. Yeah. I, um, I've, I've if they ever make a, a new Marvel vs. Capcom game, I'm definitely on it. I'm not going to learn the old ones, because that's a lot of learning to do for a game that's not particularly lively. Um, same thing every day, Carl. I think the same thing every day. It's, it's way too late. <laughs> uh, what else? Um, 
I'm sure there's something I was thinking of. Um, I don't think I'll be doing Mortal Kombat or anything. I really just need another tag fighter okay. that's um relatively extreme. Like I, that's one thing I find sad. Room is like if when fighters he dies, I don't know what I'm gonna be playing if there's not like Marvel vs. Capcom four or something. Hopefully by the time it dies, like there will be a Marvel vs. Capcom game. That's that's my bet. Hopefully. I can only pray. There's at least another year or two on Fighter Z. Hopefully yeah. more, but some people are quite negative, so. Yeah, I mean, it is quite a unique fighting game. And it has just undergone, undergone like, a pretty recent change. And, like, even with our community, um, like, recently it's had a little bit of a spike. Um, like, because what, what do you think our average is? Like, because. Before, I would say a few months ago, the average was like 10 or 12, but it's spiking up to like mid, like 20 to mid 20s now. I'm getting a few extra players in with like DLC characters too. So hopefully they space it out quite well. Yeah. And then and we have all these other people who are like, someone messaged me the other day and I was like, oh yeah, I need to find some people to play Fighter Z with. It's like, oh cool. Uh, what's your in-game name? Like, oh, I haven't got it yet. I'm waiting for Gogeta to come out. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> Oh, I, I, I was confused for a number of reasons. Vegito's in the game is pretty much the same. Yeah, pretty much, yeah, you're right. So, oh, actually, one controversial thing about Fighter Z I, I, I'd like to get your thought on. So, we have three Gokus in the game already, Coles. What do you think about GT Goku coming in? Is it too many? Too, too many Gokus? The issue with there being three Gokus. Um, because I think there are three Gokus. I think Goku Black is different enough. Um, oh, yeah, well, technically the so issue is, is different. that they're actually the same character. Their specials are different, but their normals are the same. So a lot of the tricks between them all work. That's the issue. So that's that. I do find that a bit annoying that they all have mainly the same normals. Mm -hmm. Um, uh, I especially... Uh, <sighs> It's just releasing a character that has that many variations. Um, like, they're all interesting in their own right. But, I mean, it's better that they're there than they're not. But also, on the same plate, we got... There's only so much space on the roster. Yeah. Um, like to me I think GT Goku is something I definitely want. Everyone want a kid does, Goku. It does look a lot different. If like, everyone, everyone wanted Kid Goku. If you say you don't want Kid Goku, then you're you're lying. <laughs> well, hopefully, I, I think. hopefully Super Saiyan 4 Goku is mixed in with like a Super or something, because the design on Super Saiyan 4 Goku is always like cool. But Kid Goku has always been been cool. Yeah, I just I just want to play a three kid team that's actually good. <laughs> like okay, so the Go Tanks, um, the Go Tanks Kid Boo Team Go Han team is okay. But, um, you have to play Kid Duanka. And that, that sucks. Plus, the neutral is really bad. <laughs> the neutral is just a very lackluster. Um, like, you have, like, you have to play Gotenks point, especially now. And, um, Team Gohan really likes having two assists. It just, like, they all, they all clash in a very bad way. So I'm hoping that, um, Goku is a relatively independent character with a Neutral-minded assist, and then that team will work. I'll be able to play three, three little, little angry boys. Yeah. Remind me not to play Broly against your team. <laughs> well, I mean, I might be playing Broly. So <laughs> I don't know. I'm, I've literally got him open in training mode right now. Oh, very right, good. Yeah, I'm actually planning on doing some stuff with Broly too. He was my, he was my main along with Goku Black as my very first team. Hulk champ. Um, well, um, yeah, hopefully I can make Limble sad at locals by playing this character and ruining it. Uh, if I'm still on that train by that point, because who knows how long I'll be playing him. He isn't on my registered for a... Our league only allows you to have two teams at a time, so you can't confuse people too much. It's right. a beginner's league. <laughs> court on court when we have Zed in the same league. Um, <laughs> where's, your, where's your Napa calls? How's that going? Um, so I'd still say my two main teams is the Nappa Kid Brew 16 and the, you know, Kid Brew Bardock 16. My Nappa setups have gotten a lot more consistent. I've figured out the little OSs you can do on the combo to make it work mainly. 
Okay, okay. Um, still online, I'm only gonna hit it like 25% of the time because you, you really need to be on board. If yeah. there's a lag spike, it's gone. <laughs> That's not happening. Um, but I might... I'll see how I go when I play them at Locals. Um, if I do well enough, maybe it'll, maybe the next Randat will have him on stream if I survive that long. Long enough to get him on stream. Oh, good luck. Good luck to you. Yeah. Just, um, just bribe the rest of the competitors with brownies. Or, like, spike them or something. Well, that won't work if, if Zed turns up. I don't think Zed is- Oh, Zed's taken my baking once. <laughs> and then... See, I- 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 I'd say, like, 50% of the fighters eat at uh, attendees at CCH actually take my baking. So, you know. How rude. Though some people have a good reason for it. Okay. What, like an re allergic reaction or something? Uh, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Like, I, I, uh, I brought some peanut toffee, and I, I had to be very careful not to kill a snail. <laughs> yeah. Be, be very careful of snail, otherwise he might, he might cop a slap. Uh-huh. Alright. Okay. Um, hmm, let me think. Right, well, I've pretty much crossed everything on the list that I wanted to talk about. Right. Uh, is there anything else that you would like to discuss, Cole? What's your future in this game, huh? What's what my have future you got? in this what's, game? What's your, what's your pipeline? Well, uh, th thank you very much for asking. <laughs> um, you've, you've reversed the script. I wasn't prepared for this. Okay, uh, well, I don't really have an intention of going pro. Uh, that's, that's for sure. Like, I'm pretty sure, like, my, my fingers are quite messed up. Like, I struggle to do an instant air dash. <laughs> um, because it, like, hurts and they feel quite stiff. So, I, I, I can, like, play the game, like, at an okay level, but no, but not, like, a professional, like, even semi-pro level. Um, I guess, like, because I came from, uh, commentary in Overwatch. And I also did a little bit in Rocket League, um, so hopefully, um, with some of the stuff that we've been doing on Thursday, I get to practice a lot of that. And I was talking to, um, uh, I shouldn't forget his name, uh, Big Ash, Big Jaddy. Oh, Big, oh, wow. Um, and, and he said, you know, <laughs> if I do get some casts under my belt, uh, before BAM, um, then hopefully, uh, you know, I can be selected and, and do some stuff there, which would be an absolute honor. They do have a shortage. <laughs> yeah, well, hello, I'm Racket. Hire me, please. <laughs> Smile face. Um, so yeah, I'll, I'll probably have to get some land experience for that first, so I'm probably g gonna do some stuff Sydney at, at Locals and, and ask around if I can do that. Um, and otherwise, I'm, I'm definitely gonna be traveling to, traveling to Melbourne sometime soon as well, if, if like... If I don't know, I do like fate Marvel, permits, actually. yeah. Let me let me just look. I don't know if uh, Battle Cat Bunker has a stream or not. I, think I know they, there are events in Sydney that do. I, I think they may do. I'm not too sure. One of them certainly does. There's probably someone there who does, but I don't know if it's a regular thing. Thank you for reminding me because I actually need to ask about this, and we're getting close to May. I know Amali plays in it, and I'm pretty sure that someone has just a Discord account called Battle Cat Bunker in the FireZ Discord. Fair enough. I don't know what their affiliation is, because it's just called that. I've only seen them talk once, so... Just, just some anonymous account. They, they, they seem happy to help. Right, right. Maybe they're not even involved with that. They're, it's a scam. <laughs> Hopefully not. Uh, I'll just enter like like by announcing my credit card details. <laughs> oh yeah, do you want to do you want to know the geographical location? Just uh, send me your credit card information. <laughs> okay. <laughs> oh, that would say be a racket thing to do. Oh. but yeah, hopefully, hopefully, um, commentary is is something that that can be done. Um, fighters e content as well, which would be cool on YouTube, like. My last tier list was relatively well received. Like, I think I had about three picks that was that were pretty dumb, but um, it's one of my most well received videos on YouTube. So I'll probably end up making a new tier list. I was I was planning on making a guide for uh, Kibu at least on YouTube. Do it, Coles. Do it. 
do it. I'm, I'm afraid of exposing tech, but uh, we'll see what happens. Oh, we? oh, you're right, actually. See, I didn't have to worry about that. <laughs> I mean, my, mind you, I don't know like any specific tech that anyone else has figured out. I just look on Twitter and I find cool stuff. I'm like, okay, I'm going to try that. <laughs> that's that's mm. what my life consists of. Just going on Twitter and finding like random niche combos that can be applied in my own regular life. <laughs> Oh, actually, maybe this is the team for you. You just play, um, Broly, Kid Buu, Goku Black, armed with my new oh. guide coming out in probably, like, a month's time, because, oh, yeah. Like, I, I really have... love Kid Buu's assist, but I cannot play him for shit, dude. Like, I don't know why. What's... I'm, I'm allergic to Kid Buu. What does he do to you? I don't what, know. What is, what is the issue? I don't know. It just... Okay, for one, I've always hated short characters. Like, I'm a short person in real life, so why would I want to be a short person in a video game? <laughs> like, <laughs> it makes me sad. Um, I, I don't know, I just don't like the short hitbox. I've, I've never enjoyed playing with it. I love short characters. Okay. They're my favorite. Where, where the yin and the yang comes. I like the bigger dudes. So also, yeah, that means I should Take that out of context. But don't, don't. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well... Uh... Yeah, actually, I'm probably going to play a little bit more Broly, because I have had a random, like, urge to, to try out Broly again, because he has some new funky stuff. Well, he's definitely good online, so, uh, <laughs> you've got hey, that. Yeah, just, just going to grab people all the time, lol. That's how you do it. Um, yeah, so, those those are my plans, and thank you very much for reminding me, Cole, because that was one thing that I had to inquire about. So, after, after we finish this, I'm going to do that straight away, before I forget. So... You know, if if we are unfamiliar about your future calls, you can certainly be my advocate. You'll like, you'll be my manager. You can call me at like two o'clock in the morning and like scream in my ears and be like, "Racket, you're an idiot." And then you know, I don't know where I'm going anymore. But hey, um, I'm gonna wrap this up, calls, because I'm really hungry um, and I want to eat. And my last podcast yeah, that I did today. Uh, actually, we're revealing this behind the curtain because the podcast that I did today, I looked entirely different. In hopes that, like, I wouldn't... People would think it's a different yeah, it's, day. It's, it's a different day. Uh, but, I, yeah, there we go. Behind the scenes, reveal behind the curtain. That uh, It's the same day. So, yeah, once again, thank you very much for watching this, guys. Make sure you follow Coles on Twitter. If you have any more socials, Coles, just DM to me after this and I'll put it in the description. Yeah, if, if you want to see likes and poor taste um, and very occasional tech posts. Yes. And probably just posts of things that... Like cook that's about that's all that happens there but yes if, if you ever want to feel hungry just just go to Carl's twitter yeah or, 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 or you can dm me for actual tech i'll, I'll do that oh well, see what a nice person what a, what a lovely person calls is all right well thank you very much everyone take care and see you next time on the rally with racket podcast ba -ba -da -ba -da.